I would introduce, then I'll get you in. So good day, everyone. I remain your only. Maz is okay. Um, this afternoon, as the conversation has been raging, what we are doing here is to look at facts, not emotions. I know many of you sometimes think that we don't say the things you like. We don't say the things you like maybe not just to get you excited, but not just to say things because you want to hear them. What we are here to do is to look at facts. Now, today we will be looking at the, as we all have seen in the flyers that have gone out, we will be looking at um, the revolt, revolution, and dilemmas of the African struggle. That is, um, this is anchored on um, a piece written by one of the guests, oh. Law Mefo, who is the um, Chancellor. Now, I will be bringing uh, Dr. Law Mefo in. Okay. So, yeah. Law Mefo is the Chancellor um, Ibo Ibo. And yeah, I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. That's fine. Okay. So, Mr. Lome, for once more here, is, a, you know, is the uh, the Chancellor Ibo Bibo, and uh, he's also the Vice President of the Ibo Initiative. He's an Abuja-based forensic social uh, psychologist and also a seasoned journalist. Lome, for, over to you, sir. Thank you, my brother. Mm. I can't... Um... Thank uh, you enough for hosting me on this uh, crucial um, issue. It concerns all of us. As uh, I told um, a television station that interviewed me on uh, the politics of Biafra, I told them, look, essentially we are all Biafrans. Yes, and, we are. Um, we are all Biafrans. We, we, we don't have to accept it to be, because that is who we are. Um, the geography, the location, our history, our origin, our essence is Biafra. We are not Hausas, we are not Yorubas, we are not Fulanis. You know, we are uh, Biafrans, essentially, and um, we are Igbos uh, also. And uh, Igbo, Igbo race is an integral part of uh, Biafra. I did the article I did because there is a new wave. Um, for... Before you get into yeah. the article, don't worry, let me stop you there. Yeah. <laughs> I know <Okay. laughs> you're, you're itching to get into the article. We will get into the article because yeah. that is, like I said at the beginning, that is the uh, cruise of the matter. That is the reason why we are having this conversation before I do yes. that, I would also introduce um, your co discussant this evening, uh, Engineer Oge Ozofo, who is the coordinator Ndibo in Germany. Oge, greetings to everyone. Yes, um, I greet all of you, my brothers and sisters, who have the chance to sit us with us in this discussion. Uh, if I must speak in Igbo, uh -huh. uh, I cannot thank Chief Oyenjenje, uh, popularly known as Mazizuki. I cannot thank you enough for bringing up this uh, discussion, and I hope it will bring us a very positive debate and uh, to encourage our brothers and sisters to have a wider view of all what we are doing. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting into the discussion. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Now, um, before we kick start in this discussion, I would probably um, just give a background on reason and you know what has necessitated this conversation. As we all know, um, as Ojuku once said that the Biafran struggle has, the, the, the ground has shifted. 
it appears and he in his before in before he dismayed he his view is that the Biafran struggle is now a thing of the mind. And defining the Biafran struggle as a thing of the mind becomes an abstract concept. Because it's an abstract concept, it's no longer something tangible that people can hold. The question is, and I will pose this question to both of you, what is Biafra? Can we start with that? Lomeva, what is Biafra? Biafra, um, for me, can be looked at uh, from um, two perspectives. Mm. First and foremost, Biafra as um, a geographical location, the Bite of Biafra. That is where the area took its name. And um, it encompasses the old eastern region and a little bit of beyond that, stretching uh, into some parts of uh, Middle Belt. And uh, even beyond um, the present day location called Nigeria. Um, that is one level of it. The other perspective to Biafra is a, an identity that we have taken for uh, living together and um, being a, um, members of uh, the same uh, um, country that is now defunct, the uh, Republic of Biafra, led by General Ebeko Juku. Um, the, all of us lived in that enclave for three whole years. Before then, we were all the Eastern uh, region, and um, we have a, a contiguous culture, contiguous um, this and that, even language. That is to say that the people of the Southeast, present day Southeast, and South South have been living as um, people who can be identified as one, even before the Biafra War. Um, and that should be the reason the area was created into what was called uh, the uh, Eastern region. Um, before the advent, before the advent of uh, colonialism, we had existed together traded together, shared so many affinities, and um, all these things tied us together into uh, oneness that uh, was visible by the time the uh, colonialism of uh, Britain kicked in. Summarily, when they came, they saw that we were already existing together and um, constituted the area into Eastern uh, region different from western region and northern region and uh, it is the eastern region the area you call biafra that um, got uh, matched with um, the western region uh, to form the southern protectorate the northern protectorate was eventually matched with uh, the southern protectorate for you to have uh, what you call uh, the protectorate the colony of uh, lagos and protectorate of nigeria in 19 14. So this is the way I say it. It's, it's an area that has taken uh, a, an identity onto itself from the bite of the Afra, which existed as a matter of fact before Nigeria itself. It's an ancient name. It's not new. And um, it's not just Igbos. It has to do with the old Eastern region, which uh, encompasses Igbos, Ijaws, Calabaris, you know, Calabar, people, Bibio, Ogoja, and so on and so forth. And uh, even beyond. Let me leave okay. it at that. Okay. Thank you very much. I think uh, while we were talking, we had uh, our sister join us. That is uh, Ankyo Briggs. Uh, she's been listening and taking notes. <laughs> Uh, greeting, sister. How are you today? I'm very good. Thank you. Happy welcome. weekend. Happy I love weekend. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good to see you again. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, now uh, we are still looking at the preliminary. Um, okay, I don't know if you have anything to say on 
your understanding on what Biafra means. Yes, I I noticed I'm having a. a Go ahead. I'm noticing I'm having a low low band here, but let me hope you can hear me clear. Yes, we, um, we, we, I think uh, our. Our Dr. Mefo has actually described the Biafra from a, from the aspect most of us know, but in the present concept, uh, we add that uh, Biafra is um, is a Biafra and Biafrans are uh, all what uh, Dr. Mefo has described, but in a more spiritual form and a more motivational form. I think Biafra represents so many things now to so many people. These are people as Nayo Ujuku has formally described, the people who, instead of taking slavery, they would prefer to die but to be free. This is one of the descriptions you know, Ujuku has already given. So Biafra is really of the mind of free-minded people, free, brave people who seek freedom and uh, who expresses exactly what they, what they want in life. Is, uh, is, uh, Biafra has even turned into a motivation, a sort of a concept. Uh, one can describe it as being good. Uh, our father said that good, goodness is not something of sometimes, but goodness is something of every time. And this is the, the, the breath, this is the, 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 the admin, according to the German, this is the, the air of the Biafrans. They want consistent freedom. They want absolute freedom without bounds, without limitations. And they will give in whatever it takes to get this freedom. That is the modern concept of Biafra. Mm -hmm. Whether one wants to describe it in terms of geographical or an economic zone, of course, it's all inclusive. Thank you. Well, thank you. I think um, for this conversation, oh, uh, Ankyo is put out, but I think she's going to come back again. For this conversation, is going to, re you know, as the title says, uh, which is based on what uh, Dr. Law Mefo said, which is peasant revolt, revolution, and dilemma of the Biafran struggle. Now, it means there is a struggle going on as we speak. And this struggle has been going on as far as we can remember. Question now, and we will get into the meat of the matter here, is what are those dilemmas as captured by Dr. Law Mefo. Now, Dr. Mefo, I am giving you the floor now to, because obviously in your well-written, in, in your well-written article, um, you captured the whole essence and you, uh, you explained the dilemma of the current Biafran struggle. So what are the, uh, uh, the, the dilemmas as you basically captured them? Yeah, I tried to put in perspective what the struggle ought to be. There are two things here. What the struggle is at the moment and what the struggle ought to be. The struggle as it is appears to me to be confused. It appears to me to lack philosophical depth. It appears to me to uh, be taken from a, a perspective that will, you know, never get to the destination. There are issues that must be put in the right perspective for uh, the struggle to have meaning and then uh, gain traction, and more importantly, proceed in the direction that it should. You know, you can be on a journey, but progressing in error. If you are progressing in error, you will never get to your destination. And this is my concern. I tried to study um, some classic revolutions because I see the Biafra struggle um, as a sort of revolution, or rather it should be revolutionary, but it is not. I discovered that you have rebellions, you have revolts here and there. And um, it's not every revolt that culminates in uh, a revolution. And that is why I try to bring out the contradictions, the struggle for people to see that you have a peasant revolt and you have revolution. And if you want 
a revolution, there is a trajectory. The Biafra struggle, the new wave of it, you know, was started by Wazurike um, uh, uh, very recently, so to speak, and um, himself made promises of uh, Biafra being a, a, a going to be established within foreseeable future. We have seen how the original Mozob fizzled out to the point that uh, even Wazurike was uh, removed completely in the leadership uh, structure of, uh, of uh, Mozob. Uh, Madu is now the chairman of, Mo of Mozob, whereas Wazurike is leading a, a different path altogether. All these things, what is going on in uh, that original uh, new wave of Biafra started by Wazurike, as far as I am concerned, is the kicking of a dying horse. Wazurike, as a factor in this, is completely out of the equation, as far as I am concerned. And IPOB came up. Their way and manner and process, you know, are not quite convincing to me. I think that um, a, a IPOB hasn't uh, done enough background work. IPOB has not uh, really um, it, 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 it taken on Biafra from a perspective that will include the South South. This is this is very important to me. I believe that Biafra without South South is it, it, a, a misnomer as far as I am concerned. The man that suggested the name Biafra for the new republic when Ojuku wanted to declare Biafra was Opigo. Opigo, you know is or was, I don't know if the man is still around, for me, John. And now we have IPOB, that is a, the champion of the struggle now, carrying on as if South South doesn't really count. I have looked at their leadership structure and I don't see, I don't see a you know, clear presence of, a, of a, the South South people. That is a, a constant to me. I think it's a problem. Beyond that also, they are saying Biafra or nothing, and even giving dates that Biafra will be realized, you know, this July, this December, they are not in a position to fix a date. I'll give you a reason. If you check all the countries that sought independence from, uh, all the countries that sought independence from sovereign nations, they, you, you have to uh, seek the intervention of a common superior between you and the United Nations. It's the United Nations that will have to come in and intervene. And before you are able to secure the buy-in of the United Nations, you need to do a lot of work. You need to be sponsored by a, a member of the uh, United Nations. I don't know any country sponsoring uh, Biafra now, as far as I am concerned. And apart from getting a sponsor country, you need to define an area, the, the territory that you want United Nations to declare a republic will have to be defined. It has to be a territory. As we speak now, the Biafra territory, the current Biafra territory is not defined. I have already said that there is a problem with South South. Ankyo Briggs here, you know, will tell you their position on the, on the struggle. And it, it is more in tandem with what I'm saying that the leaders of South South are not carried along. So even the geography, the territory called Biafra now is contentious. That's a problem. And beyond the issue of uh, the contradiction in uh, the geography, uh, the current geography of uh, Biafra, you have problem of political control. You need to control the area you must establish political control. You have to be in control of the territory that you want declared a republic by United think, Nations. Yes, I think is we will. Problem? And this is, not, this is not going on. You, you, you do not have any political control that has been established by Biafra agitation. There is none. We will. They, 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 have, they, they need to participate in the political process. They are not members of any political party. They are not registered voters. Those who have registered have turned their votes, their voters' cards, and those who have their voters' cards don't vote. They don't want to participate in the process. The reason they give is that the political process in Nigeria is a charade. Yes, it is. But it's an irreducible 
minimum. It's a demand that you have to politically control the area that you want to become a country. And it is not completely true that uh, they cannot win elections. It's not true. Somebody like Wiki proved that a popular candidate cannot be rigged out. Dixon proved it in Bayelsa twice as a governor. If Anuba proved it in Anna, in Anna Brass South as a senator, they fought their way through. There are others that proved it. What that means is that if Biafra agitators are really serious and the invest Dr. Lomifo, I think um, your I think uh, Dr. Lomifo, your connection is playing up now, and you know I, I have my uh, I have uh, Ankyo Briggs here listening um, attentively, and I think uh, there are there are some comments that already I can I can think of myself that uh, she would definitely disagree with. Now, having said that, let me um, uh, bring you on. Um, uh, thank you here. What is your view and what is the impediment, just as the title said, the peasant revolt, mm -hmm. revolution and dilemma of Biafran, the Biafran struggle? Mm -hmm. So from your view, what are the impediments? You know, okay. long before alluded to the fact that the uh, the South-South in the hierarchy of those agitating for Biafra today is being excluded now. And equally I alluded that, you know, the South South is not within the scheme of things as, you know, the current Biafran agitators is. However, I know, you and I know that you have a different view of the whole concept entirely, where I believe, and you consistently maintain that no one has ever um, consulted you nor your people as if, as regards to the current uh, struggle. Oh, all right. Um, am I unmuted? Yes. Yes. You are, you go ahead. Okay. Uh, first of all, um, I don't know if you can re-forward the paper uh, laws paper to my five two number because I'm using the phone that you sent it to, even though I have read it, oh, so okay. that we can, okay. I can refer to it during the conversation. But like you said, I have uh, enough, or based on what uh, law have uh, introduced. And my uh, my brother, Ozofo, I, I didn't hear him. I don't think that he had spoken extensively. They mm. um, will Mm, they will. The, the, the reason why I have come in like that is to establish one fact right now before I say anything at all, which mm. is to say that Nemuku Nenam Wonyaro Chuku and also Param from the age of four. Therefore, Umwegi Hega Basan Bibu against it. It's not possible. But because that now Agame Hapo the fact na wonye jo Biawuro um IPOB or Biafra. Having established this um uh, this position, first of all, very briefly, I was a teenager when the Biafra war started. Mm. Adaka Boro's uh, resistance has started and was quenched before the Biafra war, um, the, the Biafra resistance started. I was very much aware and understood the, the sentiments and the issues of what happened in, uh, in Northern region when the coup was had, how they killed, um, Amadou Bello was killed, how the uh, the revenge for the killing of Amadou Belludem resulted in a pogrom and a genocide of mainly Ndibo, because my people before this time and even now don't move around the way that uh, Ndibo move around. So the people that were killed in the north were mainly Igbo people even though very few of my people 
um, were killed. Therefore, my sentiments about the Biafran war is, is as passionate as any uh, red-blooded Igbo man or, or woman. I don't know. Can you see me? I'm not seeing anybody, but I just want to be sure that I'm, I'm seeing you. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's that's all that is important because I'm seeing only yeah, I'm myself. Seeing you. I feel lonely. <laughs> okay. Seeing, okay. Good. Go so, ahead with you. Um, first of all, generally, um, Kalabari people are not against Igbo people. Igbo people. And Kalabari is part of Ijo. Ijo is three zones. We're broken into three zones because you need to understand how we are. If we're going to join anything, you have to understand who we are. Who we are is that we're broken into three zones because of uh, the creation of states. Before the creation of states, before the Biafra war took off in full, River State was created. Before the Biaf uh, River State was created, we, the Iqueres, Ogonis, all that is now South-South, before uh, the war started, we were in Eastern region. I'm coming with real facts and sentiments because if we don't speak the truth or if we don't inform, we will not see where the problem is. Now, during the Eastern region, the ethnic nationality that was in the majority of Eastern region were Nibu. That's the majority of the whole of Eastern region. They were majority. Now, so therefore, it is okay to, at that time, refer to people like the Ijaws as minority in Eastern region. And for me as a person, it has always bothered my mind how when they created regions, why a Southern region was not created. And then we had Northern region, we had Eastern region, and we had Western region, but we didn't have Southern region. And a nation is made up of these four arms, north, south, east, west. So instead of creating the south, by the people who did it for whatever reason, maybe because they saw that we were very small, but many different people. Ogoni people are not Ijo people. Ikwere people are not Ijo people. Ekpaya people are not uh, Ogoni people, and so on and so forth. So the fact that we didn't have southern region led to the agitation for the creation of river state after independence. This was why they, uh, my people started agitating for river state. Now, the, uh, what led um, Adakaboro to declare a 12-day war was not necessarily that he felt he could ever win that war, but he needed to make a statement. And that statement is still being made today in Nigeria by different people, um, but we are still making that statement of, um, of injustice. Now, when um, you have a clause in Delta State, a state, Akwaibom State, Bayelsa State, and River State. So we do not consider ourselves a minority of a people. We're not minority, whether in today's uh, Nigeria, uh, because we have six states now where my people, the Ijo people, are. Opigo is that was an Ijo man. Actually, Law, he, he died, uh, he died a while back, he's dead. Now oh, Opigo. Yeah. Yes, Opigo was an Ijo man. Opigo, in his discussion with what to call this republic, his suggestion was that it should be called Biafra. That suggestion did not mean 
and cannot mean that there ever was a geographical landed area where people identify themselves when you're filling a form you now identify yourself as coming from Biafra. There, is no, there was no such thing. There is no such thing. Now, if there was no Biafra, and the word Biafra is from the bite of Biafra, it is describing, as mm -hmm. Law quite rightly uh, said in that his paper, so we are not arguing about that. That is not what we're splitting hair about. Now, it is not that because Opigo and Ijo man suggested it, that means that Ijo people cannot say that they are not Biafra or that they are not in Biafra. Now, the, um, uh, the issue of South-South or Niger Delta or Ijo people feeling not carried along, and... Um, is, is a, it's a misconception at best, and with all due respect, nobody is asking anybody to be carried along in anything. We, we have always been a people that have resisted injustice, the Ijo people, from, uh, from the days of uh, King Jaja and Popovo, who, is a, who was a true son of Ndibo. And this, my mother's people came and did what they did, and he ended up with us. And we claim him and keep him with pride. And he decided to stay when he had a choice to go. Now, the, the, um, the fact that uh, IPOB, when uh, IPOB was first, when I first heard of IPOB, I heard of it through, uh, Mazi, I think I told you, uh, the gentleman's name. I can't remember my senior's name, but he's dead. I can't. Uh, yeah? No, I, 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 I can't remember the name either. Ezi Fe or... No, no, no. no. Ezi Fe is still alive. Okay. Oh, but there sorry. Was... Uh, 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 Chief uh, Ike Dife. Ike, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. Ike, Ike Dife. Dife. Yeah. Yes. He was the first person to reach out to me and mentioned IPOB. And at that time, he was living in the UK. Was there a time he ever lived in the UK? I, I think he normally visits. Thank you. But he called me with a UK number. I'm just giving you, um, uh, you know, firm information to show that I, I or my people, this is not my personal, what I'm going to say, is not my personal opinion, is what is the opinion of my people. Now, he reached out to me and introduced this concept to me. And when he came to uh, Nigeria, we met. And then we were also in the national conference um, together. So he was the first person that ever mentioned IPOB to me. Now, when, um, when um, Namde Kanu came out of prison, while he was in prison, I spoke up. Uh, for him severally. Now, when he came out, he came to, to my house in Port Harcourt. What I discussed with him is my private, um, is my private content between me and him. If there ever is going to be a day that we choose to make it public, it will either that he will choose to do so, or I will choose to do so, or we will choose to do so collectively and together as um, as human beings, as an adult, though I'm old enough to um, to actually be Namde Kalu's uh, uh, mother. <laughs> now, having said that, um, the the reality is that if you speak to any of my sons that are in that age group from 40 to 50 in the Niger in um, in Ijol land or even in Niger Delta, let me just say your land, because uh, Shakir people might say I'm not speaking for them. Now, if you speak to those people, you have not spoken to my people. You have not. Sure. <laughs> so if somebody says, if I say that I am not Biafra, or that my people are not Biafra, I am saying it because I am Anne Kubrick's and Ijo person. Ijo people can still come out and say 
that I'm not speaking for them, which some of them do. Okay. Now, which some of them? Can you, can you, um, can you, you know, can we wrap it up quickly? So we need to get uh, a percept, um, you know, we need to get back on track. Okay, well, I didn't know that I was outside the track. But no, no, all, no. <laughs> no all, the, all the same, because you see, what we're trying to, I, 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 I believe that what we're trying to achieve is the same thing. I have, my people have nothing whatsoever against South, South or uh, South East working together. And uh, Mazi, you are aware of this because we met through such a platform. I have, we have never been against it. What we have consistently said and will continue to say is that before we can work with anybody, whether it is Ohaneze, whether it is any other group, Middle Belt, anybody, that we need to sit down and agree on what it is that we are fighting, what it is that we want, and how we're going to go about it. As a person who is doing, who has been in this thing on behalf of myself and my people to a very large extent, there is no way that I will go into anything or would advise that anybody goes into anything without, first of all, knowing and appreciating what we're going into and what are. Uh, what are the gains that we're going to get? What are the spoils of the war? Jesus. What is it that we, that we will get? And it's not after, like some people are suggested, that we should go in, fight and free ourselves. Because law, like you said, there is no way any group of people anywhere in this world will just get up and say, tomorrow we're going to be free. We've made the decision we want to be free and then you get freedom, it's almost impossible. Okay. We must place for the what is real, what is achievable, and start from that, achieve what is achievable, and then firmly stand on that and move forward to achieve any other thing that we want. Okay, so thank you very much. I mean, um, I knew and I saw that coming because that clarification and distinction needed and must be made at all times. Now. You know what we are discussing now is the in in the in the in the opinion piece written by uh, Mr. Mefo. What we are discussing now is those impediments or those things that are not too obvious for those who are not well informed. Now, how do you get to the point of having a nation without passing? through certain stages. Remember, as Law of Mefo um, uh, alluded in his piece, and which is a very um, um, open knowledge for everybody who knows, is very simple. That you cannot achieve a nationhood without international, quote unquote, organizations getting involved. In 1967, before the outbreak of the war, if we, our memory serves us right, we will all remember that even the then Biafran had to have a vote in Addis Ababa. And that was soundly defeated. However, you know, emotionally defeated that could be at the United Nations as well, that was the same thing. It brings me to the point, and which is now showing on the screen, what uh, uh, long before uh, alluded to. He says here, the first step that would make the international community realize that the section demanding independence is on ground and in charge is taking over the political leadership of the section in question. What that means is, in Law Mefo's argument, there is not going to be much traction without political angle. And before I allow Lomefo to come back to this, I would have to make this um, clarification. Some of you must have seen the video gone viral of the a, of a House of Rep member in Southern Cameroon, which they call Ambassadonia. Why was he able to make that statement even when the Speaker of the House was shout, trying to shout him down and he said, no, Mr. Speaker, 
I must speak for my people. Why was he able to make that? Because he got into the parliament. He had the political backing of his people. Invariably, what it means is without any political arm, it means all effort is virtually infertility. Lomefo, what's your take on that? Uh, Dr. Lomefo, I hope you can hear me. You are looking at me as someone who. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think, okay. Yes, okay. I think okay. before me, okay, Chuku, uh, uh, Mr. Ozofo, can you come in now? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, to allow uh, Dr. Mefos to get himself in uh, order. I um, I just want to make a little short interjection in the whole thing. Um, this article that was beautiful written by Mefo, I think is just a clearing call to wake up all the people who have been on the fence to take a stand and understand that. Uh, as I said from the beginning, we are all Biafrans, um, whether you describe it in geographical, economic, or in spiritual. But the issue is, are we in the track to get the, our dream realized? I think that is just a warning shot uh, by Mefo, by so many other people. I recall there was uh, a year or two years ago, uh, Professor Soludo called for a very, very healthy debate about uh, the, 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 the dynamics or the movement or the procedure for this Biafra and uh, with reference to the, to the ideology of the IPOP. And he was calling for our intellectual, the elite, and actually everybody to take a part in this debate. But I must say that the essence of this write-off for me for is actually to call for a fair playground for this debate so that one doesn't see the other as his own enemy. Because this is not we against them. This is us all together. So I think that what actually got me more interested in the, in the, in the very, very clear points before uh, 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 right out in his, uh, in his beautiful uh, write-up, that we have to be sure that we don't allow only a mono-narrative, one-sided narrative of what Biafra is and what Biafra should be or how we should get it. I think it's uh, preponderance for anybody to think that if I have um, a counter logic, not illogic, but counter logic to your own point of view, you cannot by all means call me Sabo as the normal word. I think this is the one in short from before, and this is what I call our brothers to participate. That's just what I, I want to say now. Okay, I hope thank you. Uh, Dr. Mefo uh, is uh, there thank now. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 Dr. Kodan. Um, Mefo is still muted. Now, um, long before you can unmute yourself, but Ankyo, Ankyo is raising her hand. She wants to say something. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, just, um, uh, just to say that, you see, in a gathering like this, once I have taken that position, um, if it is being said that we are all Biafran so emphatically, okay. I will still say that we are not all Biafran because we cannot just sit down and accept that geographically, because once there existed a place called Bight of Biafra, that it must remain, even if we come together and we change our name, there is nothing wrong in that. But please, let us all be sensitive to the fact that we may achieve whatever we're looking for without it being Biafra. I know why I'm saying this, because it will be very Biafra, the word Biafra, to be very sincere with you, is a very hard sell where I come from. Okay. Okay. So I think, um, you know, what when, when we talk about we are all Biafran, remember Chudo Onuma once wrote a book that's called, that he titled We Are All Biafran. What it means, and that's where it comes back to what Biafran actually um mean in the in that sense that was asked before when someone alludes to the fact that we are all Biafran, just like when Dimo Dimego Juku Late said that Biafran is that liberation of the mind, the struggle to liberate the mind. In that context, I think that's you know loosely used in that context that we have to say as long as someone in you know is or a group of people are fighting 
to liberate themselves from any form of oppression, loosely used, can be termed to say, yes, a term used by everyone that is being oppressed. I know you don't agree with me on that I one, don't. but that's I fine. Don't. Let me bring Mr. Lomé for, uh, Lomé for you can unmute yourself. Mr. Mofe, can you unmute yourself, please? Can you unmute yourself? Yes, can you ahead. hear me now? Yes, we can yeah. hear you. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Um. Le let me offer two clarifications here. When I say we are all bear friends, I say that with uh, every sense of responsibility and unapologetically too. And uh, I do not begrudge any part of uh, Biafra that says that they are not. It's, up, it's, it's okay by me. And that's exactly why I was saying that um, the map has to be redrawn for us to really know those who believe that they are. It's very fundamental. And um, negotiations and buy-in also have to uh, take place. It's very fundamental too. The other clarification that is so important that I need to bring out here is this. It is clear that it is not possible to determine when Biafra will come, if it will come. This is very, very important. Even United Nations cannot determine when Biafra will come, if it will come. And I also know that there are things that if they happen in Nigeria, sovereign state of Biafra may no longer be necessary. Self-determination does not necessarily mean independence. That's correct. Nigeria, a first republic before the war, ran a constitution that permitted full self-determination without independence. And the Southeast economy, um, the, the uh, Eastern region economy was adjudged by, uh, I think, World Bank then, as the fastest growing economy in Africa and perhaps in the world. In other words, if you return the country, what we call restructuring now, if you return the country to the preponderance of the 1963 constitution, which encapsulates all the basic agreements between Nigeria's founding fathers and colonial Britain before their departure, there will be no need for the sovereign state of the Afra, as far as I am concerned. But for me, I have often said that, and it is true. If Nigeria is not restructured, Biafra becomes inevitable. Even if the Biafra of now is made up of only the Southeast, the constraints the, the Southeast you know, could have in terms of a big, you know, being an independent country, maybe access to the sea, and this has been debunked. Azumili in the Adia state is less than 15 nautical miles into the open sea. And somewhere around the, between Imo and Anabra also, is even a deeper shore that can be dredged. So access to the sea, you know, is not a problem to the Southeast. And the Southeast is up to 50 million people. So in terms of a, uh, a size, population, you know, resources, and access to the world, the Southeast does not need to beg anybody to become a country. This point is very fundamental. But I still insist that discussion and understanding must be open so that those who would want to remain in Biafra, not to join, because Biafra had been defined at the issue by the instrument that was called the Old Eastern Region. It was the old eastern region that was called Biafra, taking a name from the bite of Biafra, 
which you know encapsulates or encompasses the entire region and even beyond. This point is very fundamental. I am saying this in response to what a lady Ankyo Briggs said, you know, that we are uh, all Biafrans does not uh, have to mean everybody. Yes, for those who don't want, they don't have to be. After all, somebody can uh, reject the father and say he's no longer the father. It happens. Finally, it's important to me also that since we cannot determine the date of Biafra, if Biafra will be and eventually become, we cannot do anything that will affect our rights in Nigeria. I am a restructuralist. I believe in restructured Nigeria. For now, I do not want independent Biafra. I want a restructured Nigeria because I believe that the offer is a bigger and better tough for the Igbo man. This is my own personal conviction. And I'm entitled to it. Now, while pursuing Biafra for those who are pursuing it, Oduduwa Republic is also being pursued by the Yorubas, they should not appreciate the rights of Ndebo. Those who are fighting for restructuring of Nigeria must not be derided. They must not be stopped or you know, diminished in any way. And those who are also calling for Nigeria president of Igbo extraction should not also be diminished, must not be in any way made to lose traction or lose direction by okay. the campaigners for Biafra or nothing. Biafra or nothing, when you are not sure of the date, it's not proper if you insist on that. And for that reason, you reject political control of the region. You reject political participation. And I have said there, yeah, and I want I, IPOB people to contradict me. I want them to prove me wrong that they do not need political control of the Southeast before they can get a referendum. Finally, let me also say that we, 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 need, to, we need to also see that, look, a better Nigeria is what everybody craves. Nobody is saying that uh, Nigeria should uh, be dismembered. For me, if Nigeria will not be, it has to be a peaceful you know, dissolution, a resolution. It has to be peaceful. So that those who still want to live in any part of the country can still live there. There are, there are Nigerians in the, the West African coast. There are Igbos all over the world. There are the, so the, 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 the dissolution of Nigeria, if it becomes inevitable, must not, we must avoid violence. We must avoid another war. Nigeria can be renegotiated, I believe this. We need to renegotiate the country so that we can restore the 1963 constitution. We don't need to return to the regions, but we can transfer those no. powers enjoyed by the, by the regions to the states. Today, you are running a 1999 constitution that has 68 areas that are there in the concurrent list, and only 16 for the states. If you have 68 areas in the exclusive list, exclusive to the federal government, and only 16 areas for the concurrent and the states, then you are running a unitary system of government. And this has not helped anybody, and we can all see it in the fact that as we speak today, up to 30 states of Nigeria cannot exist without the handout they get from the federal government. That's what we're saying. Let, let me mention two things. One is state police. It's been argued that we don't need state police. Regions run police, and they will be better for it. it, it look at physical federalism. Before then, you know, before the war, the regions, you know, retained 50% of what they generated and released 50% to the federal government, and federal government then retained 20% and redistributed 30%.
We are saying that this is strict constitution. That was what we agreed on with Britain. We must return to it. That is what I mean by restoration. That is what I mean by restructuring. So I advise Biafra agitators to stick to what they are doing, but they must change their language. They must know that they have to participate in politics and win political power. I'll use the example of Amb Ambazonia. Ambazonia is the Southern Cameroon seeking independence. They are even in armed struggle with the Cameroonian army as we speak. I am not advising Biafra agitators to engage in armed struggle with Nigeria. They don't need it. They are following the political diplomatic process, which is better. It's held there. But they must engage in politics. The reason I said it before, and let me reemphasize, the reason is because if you do not control the area you want, carved out as a country, nobody will carry out referendum there. Any country where you don't have such a problem is the country that choose to dissolve themselves. USSR, Sudan, for example, do you know when John Garang started the struggle? General John Garang, do you know when Dr. Garang started the struggle? He died and the process continued. So even if you use the ex example of Sudan, he took a long struggle and there was political control of Southern Sudan by the people that they were struggling. But here you have Biafra agitators who do not want to be part of the political process. And if they don't do that, what they are doing is nothing but peasant revolt. Peasant revolt at best will end you some reforms in the system, but it will not end your independence. Okay, thank you. The very much. Now. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lomefo. So on that note, um, I mean, as, as was said before here, what in this whole debate and struggle and everything happening, there is one fundamental thing that is missing, debate. Professor Soludo rightly alluded to that when he said that there are some politicians waiting, sitting on the fence thinking, what are these boys doing? Maybe let us wait when the food is cooked, then they will jump in and uh, probably uh, be the ones to control. Now, Professor Soludo, in that book launch of uh, Chudi of Odile, actually made it very clear that what ought to be happening is political debate on what is it to come. In Igbo, they say, Ani ji si aho, amo tonsi. How is that nation, how is that entity going to look like? Let the debate of how that is going to look like start now. Now, in one of the things written, and one of the things that is, you know, um, that it's, it's apparently clear is that the lack of political engagement. There is this example that if we really want, you can, for instance, start by the Anambra State election, where you control the Anambra State House of Assembly, you control the, 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 the governor of Anambra State by electing men who believe in the ideology that you drive. You drive your own ideology. And these ideologies are the things that are going, are going to sell, because if you get in, into a state and you begin to do those right things that ought to be done, the things you criticize even the Nigerian government today of not doing, and you begin to do them and do them right, it becomes an easier footing for you to even go to other states. Now, one of the things uh, uh, Dr. Lomifo alluded to is, he said that a mistake of the Biafran struggle that they are losing sight of the rights of Ndibo as a major ethnic group in Nigeria while pursuing Biafra, just like the Yorubas, that the Yorubas are doing, engaging in the political struggle, and at the same time, they are engaging underground, and you can see them meet, they talk with one another, 
to engage to realize their dream land of the Odudua nation. Question thereof is, part of that impediment, what is it that is missing and what is it that can be done in order for these two um, things to change? Okay. Are you uh, able you... to make some input here? Yes. Uh, can you see me now? Because it seems there's okay. some, some technical problem. Okay. Um, I think the let me start from the the topic of today to avoid the, the fate of the peasants, uh, the peasants revolt. And uh, I rushed quickly to have a view of what happened. And uh, the last thing I saw is that the King Richard, when he quelled the revolt, hanged some of them and then told them that lames you are and lames you will remain. And uh, this is a, a warning that uh, this uh, debate today should bring to all of us. I think it goes beyond uh, what uh, Professor Ludo called for on let us debate on how the country of our dream would be like. I think you should start on how actually do we even come to this country based on the, on the analysis uh, Dr. Mefo has given us today. Uh, for us to have a very encouraging and uh, fruitful debate, I think everybody has to be very comfortable that he's talking with his own brothers. Uh, sorry if you want me to refer to what happened here in Germany. Uh, the, the, the evils here in Germany, all of us are Biafrans, including everybody, made every effort to see if we can have a common ground with, from different philosophies of this Biafran IPOP debate. Uh, a lot of effort was made and a lot of money invested to invite some of the senior Igbo politicians, which actually should be in the forefront of our Biafra, the country we want to have the debate about. And um, it is, um, it is um, a known fact what happened. It was a big slap and um, the same thing happened to all the other Igbos in diaspora. Everybody become, become afraid of what is going to happen if they invite our senior politicians. You cannot kill your own king just because you want to have your own way. And what I'm trying to say is that I support everything uh, Dr. Mefon has said. For us to have this debate, um, we will try to convince all our brothers, including my sister, Mr. Mrs. Uh, Briggs, those people in the other area that think Me. they don't... Me, sorry, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Who, who, who think they are not in Biafra? That we, we have now the insight to know what happened uh, and to know the mistake that everybody made. But it is very important that we all come together and have a very reasonable debate. Um, that is the only thing I can say right now. It does not make any sense that somebody calls you names because you believe in restructuring Nigeria and we are not a member of IPOB. That doesn't make sense. And it makes us only a laughing stock. Of course, I give credit to the, to the young men who are in IPOB or in other Biafra organizations. The main fact that we are having this topic today is to their credit that they have brought this issue to, to debate. And therefore, uh, we should not, we should give them that chance to, to reform or the, to readjust the, uh, the, uh, some of the rough edges in their approach to the issue. I think that's a major issue now. We must have to bring them into the debate that we're all pursuing the same goal. We want freedom, we want a functioning Nigeria, we want seaports in eastern states, we want a, a, an operational airport in Enugu or in Aba or in Onicha. I mean, there is no reason why all the imported goods in Nigeria should be cleared in Lagos. It beats a simple imagination. And this is uh, these are some of the, 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 the actions that fuel this, this aggressive agitation, excuse me, the language. When these young boys see what is going on, I mean, the, the disparity, the injustice meted against the Southeast or South-South is very, very clear. But what we are saying is, before we even have our country, let us debate the best way 
to avoid what happened to the Besant revolt not to happen to us. I think that's the major issue of this debate. Thank you very much, um, Oge. And I think, um, you know, uh, uh, my sister Ankyo has been busy uh, putting some points down. And I'm thinking, are we safe now? <laughs> no, you are still on mute. Can you unmute yourself, please? Okay, there. Uh, I said we're yes. safe now. We've always been safe. I want to get. <laughs> so there is no there is no there is no worry there. <laughs> uh, but I, cannot back, uh, I cannot go back to my father's people empty empty handed. That's all I'm saying. I am my father's <laughs> okay. uh, I am my father's daughter. I am not a uh, uh. Briggs. That would mean that I married into the Briggs family. I'm not. I am of the Briggs family. So um okay. all right. See, I just I I will just use the bullet points and um, uh, because I think uh, my position is well understood, so perhaps there will be no point in emphasizing. Now, um, our our issue is that we do not um, we do not accept that old Eastern region is Biafra. We don't accept that. Now okay. I agree with um, I agree with uh, Mefo, uh, and on every content of his paper, actually, I agree with him. And um, I the, the only thing is that uh, we Igbo people, Abonima people, Kalabari people, as of right now, and as I can remember, the word Biafra has never been associated with our existence or our political involvement. I'm sure my must have heard of the name uh, uh, Chief Wenike uh, Oprum Briggs. I don't know if you've heard of his name. You, you have? Okay. Now, if you have, he's my immediate, my father's immediate elder brother. And so you will also know that my family has been involved in politics at every level, whether to the left or to the right in Nigeria. So I'm, no, not, no. Uh, I'm not a novice as a, as, yeah. as a human being, as a person from a background. I'm not a novice with Nigerian politics at all. Now, um, okay, referendum. I, I also know that you cannot conduct referendum in somebody's land without the person keen into that referendum that you want to conduct exactly. even if you're the uh, even if you're the U united nations you cannot come to abonima one day bring a piece of paper and say you're doing referendum and you're identifying me as what i'm telling you that i am not so the issue of referendum is even we have not even resolved the issue of biafra where we're, we're talking of a referendum so now um, that that we say we are not Biafra <laughs> does not mean that we do not um, support the movement of Biafra or Biafrans or the people that are moving Biafra. I've told you it is the word that is the issue. And let's not, we're adults and we're trying to move forward. We have people behind us. Let us listen to each other. So now, the next thing is that because, and um, uh, my brother in Germany also said it, because we say that we are not keen into the word or we're not in, uh, have, have not accepted any discussion because nobody has approached us on the issue of Biafra, does not mean we're Fulani people, does not mean we support Fulani people, does not mean we're slaves of Fulani people. Now, um, I agree with Mevo that what IPOB is doing is throwing away the rights of Ndibo in Nigeria today. Uh, Mazi, I told you that the, the discussion today is that Jonathan, people are calling on Jonathan to run in 2023. And I told you, and I've written it, or, and I've said it, that if Jonathan, my brother, wants to run for president in 2023, he's on his own. 
the only uh, candidacy I will support in 2023 is an Igbo candidate. I'm not saying it because the three of you are Igbo gentlemen. No, it's my position that the Igbo, as long as Nigeria is still together, whether with uh, clutches or with one leg or whatever, or in a wheelchair, whatever way it is, if there is election in 2023, the only candidate I will support and work towards is a candidate of Ndibu. That's all. Even if my own person, because the South South, the Southwest have taken eight years. The South South have taken one year from uh, what's his name? Yaradua's uh, remaining year. And then the, the one that you massively supported uh, us for that you're paying dearly for now. Five years. So there are some people in my place that think, oh, they did only five years, so they will do uh, another turn. I said, no, you will not, because they have you do the other remaining one year. So on that on that footing, I am with you. If we are still together and we agree that we're going into an election, you have my one vote for the Indigo uh, candidate. I will give you that one. And every other vote that will follow my vote, if they if they agree with me. So there is no um, there is no way that anybody can say that I am not in support of Igbo people wanting freedom, where, whichever time they want that freedom, how they want that freedom. Now, river, Atlantic Ocean, access to Atlantic Ocean is not, I am too educated and exposed, like all of us, for me to think that even if, and it is not true because before you've, uh, you've demonstrated it, even if Ndibo happened, even if they are landlocked, which they are not, the, uh, the, you can get whatever you want flown into any place you want in this world. So that is not, the water is not the issue. Even the oil is not the issue. What is the issue? is that we must recognize each other's rights today to determine their own future for tomorrow, each person's rights. And if your rights and my rights merge together, then it's even better, then the, uh, the problem is half solved. So, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, because in my lifetime, I have seen uh, Ojuku's uh, Biafra, I have seen MASO, I have seen IPOB, I've even seen uh, Lower Niger Congress come up and discuss freedom of Biafra, which includes me and my people. Even during the Biafra war, that, uh, what's his name, Opigo suggested the name. He didn't suggest it for my father, he didn't suggest it for my grandfather, it's Opigo. Opigo is not even from my place. As an Ijoman, he's not from my community. You know, so what I'm trying to say is that even if you have an Ijo person, a non-Ijo person, uh, who will I make? Even if Jonathan, for instance, says to you that um, uh, that um, he's a Biafra man, he's not speaking for every Ijo man. And this is what we need to get. So please, my brothers, nobody is against the movement to free ourselves. But we can only achieve what is achievable. We can't have Republic of uh, Ijon land today. It's not possible, me, I know. But if tomorrow everything fails, like it's happening uh, in uh, Cameroon and all of those things, if everything else fails, then we have no other choice but to re re record to the, uh, to, uh, to the next available thing which is to say that, well, if we perish, we perish. Let us uh, free ourselves. So please, I agree with you that we should begin to take the narrative away from people that lack understanding. You can't burn every bridge except the one that you're standing on. What if that one, somebody else comes to burn that one? What will you do? You know, so it cannot be Biafra or nothing. And these people will not let us go. We have to fight for it. So let us start with what we can achieve and then stand firmly on what we have achieved to achieve even what seems unachievable right now. Thank you very much. And um, 
I would um, take us to the next segment, which is basically what we did before, what we are doing, and what is need, what is then needed to be done. If I take us back down memory line, we had in 2006, when Uwazurike under Masob said that uh, Igbos, now again, specifically here, Igbos of the Southeast should not vote. And people, you know, and people were uh, denied, sorry, Igbos shouldn't get counted and people were denied the census. Um, census. Now we are still suffering from that. And we can also see in 2000 and uh, was this 17, uh, during the Anambra State, uh, no, I think 16 or 17, during the Anambra State um, election, when there was a call for election boycott, which was eventually agreed upon again for people to vote some hours to the election. And again, the people that now went to vote are people who have destroyed their PVCs or who out of, you know, following the instructions, never got any PVC. Now you wonder, what was the essence of now getting in, you know, voting at all? Now, moving forward from here, as was said before, that even when the Yorubas are discussing about Odudua, they are still conducting elections. They are not boycotting elections. They are not boycotting census. The question now, this here is now for Ndibo. The question here is, what are those things that Ndibo have to start doing in order for us not to, even while you are still in Nigeria, for us not to lose sight of what is happening, for us not to lose sight, you know, for us not to lose our shares, because it appears we are, you know, the things that are agreeable to us. We, we cannot demand for people who do not represent your interest, who have who come in only on, 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 on a business level to contest and to recoup their money, and they've gone in there, and we are there shouting, they're not representing us. Of course, why would they represent you? You didn't give your vote. You didn't even vote. So how come would they represent these things, what is it that we can do in order to uh, stop the impending um, crisis that we think is going to happen? Okay, I think you're the only one um, rightly settled in. So the, the question once more is, what is it that Ndibo will do to ensure that the mistakes of 2006 and the mistakes of 2017 uh, which eventually, uh, uh, you know, spilled over to 2019, doesn't happen again. Yeah, thank you, Mazi. Um, for me, it's uh, very simple. We take a cue from history and we'll see what other people have tried and failed, and then we'll try to avoid it. Uh, it is the prayer of everybody that uh, you learn from somebody else's mistake. So for me, the practical thing we can do right now is, first of all, um, we should, as a people, have understanding with the younger people who have a different view of how to achieve this, our dream country. Um, excuse me in English, Igbo, because uh, we should not castigate them so extremely that they become even more obstinate to cue into a spiritual argument. Um, that is very, very important, but it, it, it demands a lot of shrewdness and a lot of maturity to get them across on the board and convince them that what they are doing might not be the way to go about it. Secondly, uh, from the other side of our struggle, um, 
I will appeal to them to have a wider listening ear, if I can say that. Uh, they should understand that there's a difference, according to Jerry Rawlings of Ghana said. When somebody says an argument and another person comes with counter argument, that is not a point to quarrel. You can quarrel when somebody comes an argument and or that logic, and the other one comes with illogic. Then that's where you can quarrel. But that we have different levels of good argument shows that we can even come with a better spirit argument where we match our stance together. And um, this is the only way uh, so many other good spirited people uh, that not so brave uh, like Dr. Mefo on the BRICS and many of other people that have spoken in this topic, that's we encourage them to come out because you cannot build this country on your own. You cannot build the country only on the people shouting on the streets. You need everybody. And um, again, I have to go back to our Igbo philosophy, which is full of wisdom. As you know, it behoves my intelligence that I have seen a person who is looking for the whole country can castigate his leaders and stone them in the public and naked them in the public. That is that is a cry that, that cries straight to the heavens. And the so-called providence and favor will definitely be against you. I mean, this is a natural instincts. So we really, I really appeal to my brothers in the other side of the philosophy on how to go about it. First of all, they have to know that we are all in this game together. As I said from the beginning, nobody has uh, more blood than, uh, than the other. I, I encourage them, I thank them for the effort they have made to bring this issue to the topic. And that is exactly the prayers of every person in a family. You want to have everything. I remember there was this Orient Bank in uh, Enugu, those of you who know Enugu. Uh, the symbol on the Orient Bank was a rising sun. There was a soft pressure to the owner of the bank, and the, 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 this, uh, this uh, rising sun was changed, and they replaced it with a, 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 a head of a palm fruit, Isiaku. Uh, the very un careless onlookers didn't notice the difference. So the method that some young boys came out shouting with every amount of the energy in them, um, is what is something worth of praise. We must not castigate all of them, but we must try to build a soft ground so that this debate can be very fruitful and then we avoid the, um, the fate of the peasant revolt. The peasant revolt ended with the proclamation by Rich the King Richard, lames you are and lames you remain. That is what I don't want to happen to my children. That's what I don't want to happen to my generation. That's what I don't want to happen to our people. We are intelligent enough and intelligent demands you should be able to find a very, very smart way to come out and achieve your aim without unnecessary rancor. Thank you. So, okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Oge Chibri there. I think um, we've lost um, Lord Mepo. I think he, has, um, he had a couple of issues with, um, you know, the network there. Now, the... The, the sorry, sorry, sorry um, I, well, while they are getting ready, I will still have to put in here in Germany. Uh, it's not different from other countries, but we are consciously trying to build this bridge. This part what happened here. This part what happened to one of the senior uh, politicians in, in our land. We are all the same thing that what is at stake, what is in future is much more. So we are making every effort to build bridge with this other younger generation, this IPOP or the other people who have a different view on how to achieve Biafra. So that everybody will know we have this in at stake together. That's just what's in point I want to uh, put here. And I think it's very important that in as much as we make public statements or condemning one method or the other, we must have to bear in mind that um, you have to accept me, first of all, then before we can talk, because Nandima is now so tiny, I was a watcher. So it is um, very important that we go up this way. Yeah. And so. uh, uh, okay, I need to point out here 
I do not think that anybody or anyone is condemning anyone. What I believe we are doing here is to engage and kickstart that needed debate, as alluded by Professor uh, Soludo when he made those comments in that book launch. Now, the next segment, what I'm going to do, I can see, you know, we have close to 500 people watching. What we now need to do, watching live and asking questions, what we now need to do, um, we might take some questions, you know, at this segment now, we might take some questions and we might take some of the calls. Now, I will allow them to call in. I'll put it on speaker that we all hear that uh, there are questions and we answer these questions. However, I okay. must sound a note of warning. Please, we must be as civil as we can. Anyone who uses any foul language or insults anyone here will be banned. And I'm going to end that call. That's a note of warning. And before I pick your call, please ensure that you mute whatever device you're watching us from so that we don't have that background echo. So I have the first caller here. Who, uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hi. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Justine. So hold on. Can you people can you hear what uh, she's saying? Yeah, I can hear clearly. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah, I can hear her. Yes. Hi. Hi. My name is Justine. I can hear her from here. Just filling up with what is going on. Okay. My major concern is my people back home. They, because they, what they are discussing now does not really um, does not does not bother on the on on what is happening back home in our land. They are busy talking about politics, election, where our lives are all at stake. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from the United um, Arab Emirates, UAE. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the other day. Okay, because what matters most to me, more importantly, they might have the connection in the world. Okay, they might have what it takes to fly out of that country, but we've got people back home. We've got people back home that depend, that wants to be safe. What are they doing about it? What are they saying? Politics or no politics is not going to save our people. Our lands have been invaded. The other day, I'm sure they've all seen the video of a girl that, that was gang raped by the stream side. No, 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 sorry, sorry, hold on. That hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That video again is an event that happened on the 6th of November in Zimbabwe. 6th of November 2018. In Zimbabwe. Okay, okay. So let's put things in perspective. So go ahead. All right. Okay. Whether in Zimbabwe or not, but this thing is happening in our land. Okay, this morning, this morning somebody was killed. An old man was killed in, in, in Imo State. Do you know and where, do you know, do you know the details where in Imo State? Um, Ogu, Oguata, I believe Oguata. The man's what? name was even mentioned in the video. O Oguata, in Imo State? Yes, in Imo Oguata, State. maybe. Can you spell that for me, please? Because I... It's O-G-U-T-A. -O okay, Oguta, okay, that's fine. That's fine. In Imo State, okay, an old man, he was butchered. He was butchered. These are the things that bothers us, not okay. even the politics. That, that's not fine. Even, that, not even... No, okay, that's fine. One thing you have to understand is you've, you've, call, you've called in to make your own contribution, but one thing, it, it boils down to what we said before about the debate. You cannot impose what you want people to dis to discuss you can't impose it on everybody to discuss okay yes we have people we have at the, on the ground tasked with lives security of lives and properties now if there are infractions if something like this happens that's why i have taken your uh, the location of what happened then that will be looked into be rest assured that the way every one of us here is concerned even more than you can ever imagine. Every one of us, you know, we have parents, we have brothers, we have sisters. We even live in the same community. So the, uh, our security is a collective. Please, I think we should drop this notion that everybody must now talk about what is happening. I mean, we're not police people. We can only give intels. And if there are things that we have to do as a people, 
we have to be as well be very wary how we do that. Thank you very much, and let's take another caller. Hello? Hello? Yes. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Eze. I'm calling from the United States. Eze, okay, go ahead with your question. Eze, go ahead with your question. Yeah, but she is not against Biafra. Rather, she is talking about agreement. Go ahead, she's listening. Yeah, she's talking about Okay, I do, uh, thank you very much. I will let her, uh, Anki uh, Briggs, please put that down. I will let you take that question later. Let's take another caller. Hello. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Anki. I'm calling from the UK. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Uh, well, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, who? Um, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Okay, my name is Mumenda Ejedude, and I'm calling from the UK. Mm. So, Go ahead. My, contrib my contribution will be on the issue of referendum when uh, I Briggs mentioned it. What I want to state clearly is not every ethnic nationality. That is to say, Igbo, Urubo, Ichekibi, Isoko, Idibio, Efik, Igala, Idoma, Igede, and so on, Ijo included, Okoni. Not everybody have agreed to be part of Biafra. There are Igbos that are kicking against it, just like there are Igbos that are dying for it. The same thing from Ijo people I know, they want Biafra. Some Ijo people said over their dead body. The same thing with Ijekiru Robo. It's like this. So what we learned, what we did, the first option is there must be a referendum to be conducted in each and every now, now, hold on. You see, you see, when you talk about referendum, you appear to ignore what the discussion that centered in before now which authority will conduct a referendum without any political uh, uh, entity to drive it? Because we, we cannot get a referendum from our computer. We cannot get a referendum by shouting, you know, typing it. Now, what is, listen, when Nigeria, before Nigeria got independent, it took Pa Enahoro to move a motion for Nigerian to gain independence. He didn't do that from his bedroom or from Zaza room. He did it from the parliament. And he did it from the parliament, why? Because he was a parliamentarian. He was elected with a mandate. Now he came into this parliament and he requested 
for this to happen. Yes, it didn't happen when he, you know, eventually I think uh, uh, Femi Kayode's father had to equally do another one, but at least he's in the history books today. But are we campaigning as a people? Do you have any 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 idea of campaigning, say, on 2023, 2027 or whatever to say, we are going to elect this set of people. We will send them to the National Assembly. I know we are only five in the Senate House, but it's not about the number. It's about making a landmark statement for someone to go in, go out there and campaign to go and demand for one thing. You know, you know, it could be a starting point. It could be a starting point. Again, thank you very much for your uh, for your contribution. Let me take the next call. So after this call, we will answer the questions so far generated. Thank you. Uh, who is calling? And you're calling from Germany. What's your name? Are you speaking to me? Yes. Oh, I'm not calling from Germany. Okay, sorry. I'm calling from the United States. Okay. Yeah. So what's your name and what's your contribution? My name is Elvidio Piano. I'm calling from Los Angeles. Okay. Um, yeah, I watched you uh, yesterday or two days ago and today again um, on your presentations. And I, I'm looking at you, a young man. Uh, love what you're doing. But my question is... Maybe not too young. Why? <laughs> Why is this time that the same group of people that have been working with the Nigerian government are now being presented to discuss the, the critical issue? Why is it this time? I saw the presentation with uh, the OB of Onija and all the big, supposedly big shots in England. And this morning I'm watching you again presenting uh, another group of people. My question is why is it this time that we are politicking about which way to go? I think it's important that we, we consider what we do and the, the timely manner. Okay. You know, with now, which we now, now um, thank you very much, sir. I think that question is directed at me, and I will take it while you're still on. Very simple. It is what we said before the conversation must keep happening. No one has the right to determine the timing, it is a continuous conversation. I'll give you an example. Now, we saw what the first caller called in and said, the, the leaders are not doing anything. The Igbo leaders are not doing anything. Now, people go on the background to get the Igbo leader to say, what is it that you're actually doing? You might tell me on the phone, and it's only me, Mazeko, knows what you're doing. Okay, can you come on air and tell the, the whole Igbos in everywhere, in the diaspora, in Nigeria, everywhere, tell them what you're doing? They come on online and said what they are doing and the reassuring people, you are the same person calling and saying, why are they talking about it? Come on. I am Ambukwane Zunyota. Ebunyaye Numbamba. Ebutuaya Numbamba. I'll take the next caller. Thank you very much. So uh, who is the next caller, please? Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Okay. No, it is no, 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 no. Sorry, it is the person's right. That's what we. Sorry, no. No, it is okay.
people we are, we are dealing with, the full and they are very funny. Sometimes you do not understand these people. These people can have a very long time plan and they will keep it within themselves, unleash it any time they want to unleash it. But we evils, we find it very, very difficult. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much now. We will stop taking calls. Yes, we will stop taking calls and, and deal with the ones we have already. Please go ahead because we are running out of time now. Okay. The other day, I saw, I saw a video where some chiefs in the job land gathered together, made some comments concerning that they are fully in support of Biafra and that they are fully in support of, of IPO. I saw this video. It's still on my, on my Facebook. I can send it to you. So these are old men, chiefs within that area. You understand okay. me? So who, who actually do you consult when you want to make consultation in a village concerning this kind of thing that we are trying to achieve. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Let's take the next person. Hello. Let's take this caller because you have been calling for a long time. Thank you very much for your question. Let's take the next person. Hello. Let's take this caller because you have been calling for a long time. Hello. Yes, okay. This is John here. Please. You are feeding back. Move away from where you're watching me from. Or I caught the call, please. You're feeding back. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Make uh, ask your question briefly. Um, good afternoon, Mars. Yes, okay. This is John O'Connor. Uh, hello. Okay. Yeah. Good hello. Okay. Hello. Okay. Can you make your question you brief, not, please? You may not know. Okay. Uh, my my actually, it's a comment and a question. Mm -hmm. uh, what law proposes? is a restructured Nigeria, which he says provides a greater and a bigger tough for the evils. Uh, in a sort of solve et coagula. Uh, the Yorubas have tried restructuring for so many years. Nobody has taken it up. The Nigerian state has refused to change anything. So we've been having this experiment for over 15 years, and we have been receiving the same return, the same results. So proper madness is to continue with it forever. So uh, I agree with the idea of taking political control on the ground, where you call Biafra. But if people like him and the others refuse to dirty their hands in this struggle, how do we expect to do this? We can't leave everything to IPOP. Actually, there are the people who have revolutionized this struggle. Uh, for so many years, it wasn't even possible to mention the name Biafra, but they brought it forward. If they do not receive support from people like him, uh, Chidoka, and the rest of them, how do they expect this struggle to be cogent, to be articulate? And to be potent. Thank you. My Thank you very much. So, on that note, I will stop taking calls for now. And, um, Ankyo, I think I would let me kick start with you and let me uh, unmute yourself, please, and uh, um, you know, take the question. Okay, first of all, I, I have had to move around so that I charge my phone, so that's mm. why you see me fidgeting so that uh, I can get that now. Before this section, um you asked um, a question, I think, um, about what should 
or I don't know who actually asked it, but I, I want to believe it's you. What should Ndibo do? I think there was such a, such a question yes. to, yes. Uh, to um, for who they are in Nigeria along those, those lines. Well, first of all, both Ndibo and every other ethnic nationality, even the people in the middle belt, I think we all agree that our problem is very similar, if not the same. And I think we agree. We don't have a disagreement on the fact that we are all sure where the problem have always originated from and continues to stay. I think it is our responsibility um, as different uh, nationalities that we are to inform our people on what is actually possible and what is not possible. What you desire and what is possible are two different things. Mm -hmm. I think that um, for me as a person, I've always maintained for a very long time, and I've been in this for 22 years now, that I have no doubt in my mind personally that Nigeria as a country, if we continue like this, we will be wasting our time. And our children, excluding mine, because I, I definitely won't want to be part of that, are going to come and take up this struggle. Now, what we need to do is inform our people who don't have the right information of what is possible and what is not possible. And then put it in, in order of priority as to what we can achieve and what we cannot achieve. Now, for instance, the very immediate thing, politically, people say, why, why are people discussing politics? Look, if we don't discuss politics, what, what will we discuss? War. What will we discuss? We're talking about politics. And the way the politics is run in Nigeria does not favor you and I. That's why we're talking. If it favors us, we'll not be here. I feel any people arguing with us. They're not. They're just doing what they want to do. It's you and I that are arguing with them and making our case. So it is very necessary that we give the right information. There is a lot of propaganda. There is a lot of lies. There is a lot of misinformation, disinformation that we ourselves, our, some, some of us are perpetrating for the purpose of being heard and being believed. And the people we're fighting are allowing it to go on because it serves their purpose. That the fact that uh, Niger Delta people, uh, Ndibo people in the form of people pushing um, IPOB are always seen to be arguing who is Biafra and who is not Biafra. It's good for the people that are oppressing us. But we have allowed it so that even in this discussion, someone is saying everybody is Biafra, and another person is saying, no, we're not all Biafra. That's not what should be. We should, there are certain things we should drop for now and fight the fight that is necessary to fight. Now, the, uh, the next thing I want to, I want to uh, uh, suggest is that Somebody raised here and said, oh, he saw on Facebook or whatever, a video that he's showing Ijo people, Ijo chief, that uh, are saying they are fully in support of Biafra. Let me tell you one thing. That is not true. One, one story says it's Ogoni people. It's not true. Another person will now ask a question that um, how do you, who do you talk to? Please. What do you mean, who do you talk to? If your people are a people, they are ethnic nationality. Bayelsa is fully Ijo. If you want to talk to Ijo people of Bayelsa, you will go to Bayelsa. You go to Bayelsa. You cannot go to the politicians. Because you and I know the politicians do not have the capacity we are looking for because of the type of constitution we have to speak on these issues that you and I are willing to come out and take risk on in Nigeria. It's not that we're, Mefo is in Abuja. Uh, my, my other brother is in Germany. Um, I am in Nigeria. Uh, most of the time, Mazi is in Nigeria. So the risks 
that somebody like Mefo is taking in Abuja and the one I'm taking in Niger Delta is not the same risk that uh, my brother in Germany is taking. It's not. You know, so there are things that each and every one of us must do. There are international movements, there are international movements, people in, uh, in the international arena must make. You cannot, if you do demonstration in Nigeria today, they will shoot you. If you say it's not to send people out and see what will happen in Nigeria. We are not civilized to so that. They're killing people for five naira in Nigeria. Nothing happens. And people abroad are saying people in Nigeria should go and, uh, and, uh, and confront, confront who? Who do you want to confront? You know, so let us do what is possible. Somebody said from America that, oh, he now understands that I am not against Biafra. I am put in a position where it's almost like I will now be pushed to carry a Bible. I'm a Christian and swear an oath that I'm not in opposition. Why would I be in opposition to Biafra? What I am saying is that we need to know, is Biafra possible in five years? Is it possible in 10 years? What do we have to do to make it? If you do, it is not going to be possible. Let us do what is possible. Then if you come to me, I say my name is Anne Kubrick, and you say, no, my name is Anna, because you like Anna. No, it's not. let us put some things down and go with what is possible. That video that lady spoke about, somebody sent it to me, and my heart was restless. Even I couldn't find where the video was from. I'm happy to hear that Mazi has said it is uh, from so so place. So we are the problem that we're trying to solve. And the only way we can solve this problem is to do it intellectually and begin to decide what is possible, please, and what is not possible. Somebody is living in a EU, um, uh, uh, Arab Emirates or something, and he's talking about a video referring it to it happening by one river in Nigeria, in eastern region, that is not true. You know, so these are the things we have to fight against, apart from the real enemy. Thank you. And, uh, thank, you. If I, um, thank you very much, uh, uh, long before. <laughs> Henry Yago. I know you you muted yourself. You had some of yeah. pretty much yeah, now. yeah you you have pretty much most of the questions they asked. You know. Yeah. So I don't know if you can take some of those questions. The telephone line is still buzzing. So maybe after this segment of questions, we take one more yeah, round well, of question and we'll call it a day. Go ahead. Well, uh, for me, um there is still confusion as uh, regards uh, what is possible and uh, what is not possible. The issue of timetable, history of authority, you know, from the questions you can see that uh, many of our people do not even know that you cannot fix the day and time the Africa can come. Even the United Nations cannot tell you when it will be. Even the United Nations cannot tell you whether Biafra will ever come. Because it's not in anybody's hands. It's a process. This process may even outlive all of us. I talked about the case of uh, Amazonia. They are struggled in over 30 years. And it's still on. That's a, that's a fact. If you look at, um, you know that even in the US today, United States of America, that we see as the bastion of the of democracy. If you go to the U.S., a state like California, they not mind independence. These are facts. Scotland just had, you know, a, 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 a referendum that failed, and they are planning another one maybe in the next ten years. How about Catalonia in Spain? Catalonia, they have full control of their region. They have a regional government. They have their leader in government, in parliament. Then they conducted a referendum that was not authorized by the national constitution. Their leader is in jail, as we speak. These are issues our people need to understand. Like Lady Ankyo Briggs talked about, we need to put things in perspective and understand 
things we can achieve and pursue things we can achieve, prioritize them, and know those we can do now and those we can do tomorrow. One of the questions is uh, how politics um, can be possible when the electoral system is not uh, workable. Well, see, the electoral system is not favoring anybody. That is the truth. Not even, even Buhari the, not, even the, the, not even the full, Buhari, not even Buhari's hometown. Even Buhari had to, even Buhari had to fight for 10 whole years. Why? Because the electoral system didn't favor him. What did Buhari do to get to power? Buhari had to fight. He fought. He, in fact, APC fought to get to power. They had to look. Biafra need to learn from how Buhari got to power. That is the truth. If he does not favor you, you do what you can to get to achieve power. See, I, gave I say that we can fought to retain power. Dixon fought to retain power. If we didn't fight, if Dixon didn't fight, they won't be governors. If he find you, but he didn't fight, he won't be senator. Biafrans must fight to get into the parliament. They must fight to get into the government houses in the southeast of Nigeria. If they don't do that, nobody will listen to them. If you don't have, if you don't have a governor that is pro Biafra, nobody will listen to you. And that's a fact. And though, in fact, if you want to conduct a referendum in the Southeast today, you know it is not possible. Even if United Nations says they want a referendum in the Southeast today, it is the governors that will have to receive them. The governors have, they, they, don't, they don't believe in the process. So you need to go back to the drawing board and get involved in the process so that you can have your men as councillors, as local government chairmen, as governors, as state houses, or as, as assembly members, as House of Reps members, as senators of the Republic of Nigeria. That is what has happened in Ambazonia. They have their people in their parliament. So if our people in diaspora are sitting there waiting for the time it will become El Dorado, I am sorry. Nobody is going to change this system unless we change the system ourselves. Look at what has happened to Obaseki. Obaseki is an APC governor. And what happened to him just yesterday? They said that the certificate he used in becoming governor four years ago is not invalid. And you are saying that the electoral system doesn't favor you? Does it favor even an APC governor? Come back here and let us do the battle. Stop shying away because unless we control Biafra territory, there will be no referendum, there will be no Biafra. And be corrected. Thank you very much. And, and I just, okay. uh, I, I, can I just add a little, add a little, a little thing? Yes. They have all go said ahead, it all. I want to remind our brother that everything, uh, especially John, that asked, whom do you consult now that Mefo is a confessed uh, re restructurist and uh, there are people who want to go all out right from Biafra? Whom do you consult? It boils down to politics. That is as simple as that. And the UK, we saw what happened. The the problem, the, the struggle to, to, to leave the uh, EU is all politics. And you can only have when you have. You cannot just uh, you know build castles in the air. So that is the issue. So the and I want to remind you that as of today we are speaking, Nigeria is a sovereign nation. And recently, I'm not sure, but very, very recently, uh, they, are, they, are, they have voted, given a lot of money for so counter terror uh, counter terrorist operation in Nigeria from United Nation, United States. It's a lot of millions of, of of money, and you also recall that there's a lot of aircraft that was not even supplied when uh, when uh, um, um, uh, Jonathan was there was supplied to these people now, so that when they fight. And they will kill all our brothers and sisters on the street. I mean, they, they will go free and nothing will happen. You know? So, and we live, we fight to live another day. So it boils down to politics, and that is what Mefo is trying to stress. We just have to get the ground. Then before we start looking for the stool, we have to sit. And this is what it looked at some of our brothers don't really um, understand. They want it today, tomorrow. And uh, and, and again, by the way, the most annoying part is when you are talking something about life and death and seriously, and you last it a little bit with a lot of lies. You tell us the United Nations has done this, 
the Biafra is coming tomorrow. And some of us, unfortunately, are not equally exposed. And many people swallow this hook and sinker. And they go on the street and they're killed and nothing happens. And this is what we want to prevent by making a very, very uh, a live debate and uh, a debate that will motivate us to achieve what we want. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Engineer. So for, I have another caller on the line. Please bear in mind, this program was supposed to be up to uh, four o'clock, but we are going to have some minutes extra. Please go ahead with your question. So we need to wrap it up. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Make, uh, go to, go is, straight to the my point. My name is Uche. Yes. Uh, my name is Uche. I'm calling from Kuala Lumpur. Okay. Okay. Before I go direct to my question, you, 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 I want to know something from you. You, you. There was a caller that made mention of someone that was killed. Yes. And your response there was not clear to me. You, you said that you people are not police, that they shouldn't tell you to do this, do that. Can you make it a little bit clearer to me? Because okay. I know that you are among, you are part of those guys that uh, from this Igwe Kunye, and uh, as I know, I know that Igwe Kunye is recognized. Yes. They can do, even though if there is any propaganda that is bring to the to 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 the to the front line, they can be able to verify. Okay, thank you, th th verify. thank you very much. And if it doesn't me one more, one more, please, if mm. you can give me that. So another thing, you are talking about Anahoro. I am not an IPOB member, but I am now speaking not like an IPOB. I'm speaking like an ordinary Nigerian. So what I'm my question here, my my stand here is that you said that in Ahoro, you made mention of them when they uh, uh, moved the motion for for referendum. But we have to know that the Nigeria of in Ahoro them those people that move that motion, Nigeria of them, of them then is not Nigeria of today. We have to know that. Because I also understand what the Arabians are, are clamoring for, because we have a kangaroo political system in Nigeria. So see how uh, uh, Governor of Imo State emerged today. And he's still there, functioning. So today is he, still wondering my imagination how political arrangement can be able to achieve what we are actually aspiring for okay um so i have never get it right no it's that's fine and then stay, the then stay on the line and listen attentively let me clarify this for you once and for all the first one here okay. in the chart okay. we can see the staffs are trying to put some records straight the first one the video Again, I repeat, the one on rape. My attention was drawn to that video. I did a forensic search on that video, reverse video and image search. It turned out that that video was on the 6th of November, 2018. Now I am talking about forensic. I'm not talking about emotion. I'm a father, I have girls. Therefore, when I saw I'm that, hold on, hold on. When I saw that video, it violated me. It violated my mind, and I was angry. The reason why I started making a search is to use the technology to locate the particular point that video was taken in order to go after the perpetrators. Sadly, the person that sent me that video told me it happened in Enugu. Within one hour, I got another the same video saying it happened in Imo. Within another three hours, I got another saying it happened in Ebony. So within three hours, I have the same video happened in three locations. I didn't bother at that moment, right? And to, to tell you, my, one, of my, uh, one, one of my close cat, uh, classmates in Germany then is the Zimbabwean. So when I saw that this is from Zimbabwe, what I did yesterday afternoon was forward the video to him. I said, Kevin, please, can you translate the language? That I didn't want to ask him, you know, which location. I said, can you translate the language? And he came back to me, meaning he's a Zimbabwean. He understood the language. 
So I didn't need to. A Zimbabwean is not, you know, coming to Enugu to can grip someone and, you know, and the police in Zimbabwe, actually, for those of you who want to follow it up, you can inbox me later. The police in Zimbabwe actually put a manhunt on those individuals. Eventually, they were apprehended in 2018. Now, that is on number one. On the other one, he said on Uguta, I saw something on Twitter, a man that has a, a cut at the back, but I, I asked, where did this happen? Now, please bear in mind, majority of us are in Nigeria. Our lives are as well as risk as my sister Ankyo has said. So don't, please, let's not think that we are immune wherever we are or that we don't care. Of course we care because we drive on these roads. When there, was a, when there were cases in Enugu on, on a headsmen killing people, Reverend Fadam Bakat said something instructive. And sometimes we need to pay attention. Everything is not everybody's against you. Mbaka said, can we stop the protest to find out first who did this? Everybody castigated Mbaka, but it turned out the three individuals that did that thing were Ndibo. So how do we think that our brothers who are engaged in every one crime or the other, they all get got born again and no longer engage in crime? Does that mean that the Fulanese or whoever does no longer have crime? And of course, that doesn't take that out. But we must learn to situate things. We must, because when we situate them properly, it's going to help us get to the root. Now, in conclusion here, to the point in Uguta, the lady says in Uguta, after this conversation this evening, I will dig into, because I want to understand the reason why this old man was caught. So I need to understand, and I can promise you, we have been doing a lot. We fight, and I can dig into and get to the bottom of it. Then we know who did it. You can take action. For now, it will be, honestly, I cannot say, I can just come on air and start shouting, these people killed it. I can't do that because I don't have any information. If we have information, then we'll deal it appropriately. Thank you very much for your time. And once more, who is on the line? Ask your question quickly, please. Maz is okay here. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, sorry, what's the question? You cannot call me to make a contribution and you're asking me what's the question. Oh, sorry. Um, I wasn't sure how you were talking. Okay. <clears throat> my, my name is Arunze um, from United Kingdom. And um, I just want to throw things into perspective here. First of all, is that um, I am fully in support of what uh, my four has said. Uh, we need to learn how to liaise with other ethnic nationalities. We need to cross the boundary. We need to have a handshake across the land. And liaise with every person for us to be able to get an agreement and for us to be able to achieve something. We don't just go on the street shouting, be after be after and think be after will fall from heaven. It is politics. It is liaison. It is um, ability to manage others and the ability to have an expectation. Thank you. It is manage your expectations as well. Then one other thing I need to throw to Anki is, is um, she did not answer that question about who to consult. I'm not sure she answered it very well because you cannot go to you cannot go to Biasa State on the street I of Biasa and start talking I to did. everybody. I okay. did. So, I answered. Let me answer it again. Marcy, okay. Go ahead. Let me answer it again. It's your people. I said, it's your people. We have talked to the ethnic nationalities of the uh, Ayasa. Okay, hold on. She, she will take that question again. Thank you very much. So, who are we speaking? Now that you have, now that he has said, uh, uh, Bielsa, let me leave yeah. Bielsa for Bielsa. I just let me come yes, to read that. Thank you. Hold on, we have a caller. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, hello. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good day. Make your uh, ask your question, please. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm Bishop. I'm calling from uh, Togo. Okay, yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you people for what you are doing, uh, even our, our mommy and uh, our daddies for what, what you people are doing for us because uh, you know this has been a burden to most of us we just need we just need uh, we just need people to start talking what concerns us most our our security our way forward as a people and uh, in fact our future 
because if nobody is talking, I don't know who can talk for us. But I thank God that people like you guys are coming up now to talk what consign us. And I'm still, uh, I still give credit to other organizations that have been, you know, agitating for issues that consign all of us. So the point I want to make is this. You know, I heard where you guys are talking about, um, uh, uh, you know, involving into politics and uh, there are some groups that always call for ele election by court. So what I want to say there is this. Uh, for instance, what happened in Imo State? What happened in Imo State? Governorship uh, election in Imo State. With such a, 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 such a, a, a system of a government or a system of a country, do you think that uh, if we Easterners, well, let me just put it like this. Do you think that those that are calling for election by court or for, uh, those that are saying that we should not be participating in anything in politics, uh, I, 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 do you think that they are not making good points there? And I want to say another thing to consigning... Please, uh, you're I'm taking too much time now. Ask your questions oh. straightforward, please. Okay, that, that, that is my, no, okay, my thank number you. one question. No, thank uh, you very much. Number That's number that, that should be enough then. Thank you. Um, hello? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Marzi. Yes. Yeah, I'm calling from US again. Please. What's your name? Uh, Dr. Mefo. Yeah, AC. Okay. Dr. Mefo has a question that I, I throw to him the first time I call, and the question has not been answered. Okay, and which and is? My question is this Anti Briggs, Anti Briggs makes a comment about people coming to discuss with them. Okay, we want the plan for this. My question is this. Dr. Before I know that he is a member of Biafra Council, Eda Council, is it anything they are doing to negotiate with other ethnic nationalities in the South South and South East? Okay. About the issue of Biafra. Okay. Having a negotiation, is there any move? Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Mefo, I hope you, you put that question down. Then we're going to take one more last caller, and that's going to be the last caller for the day. So the last person that's going to call now is going to be the last caller for the day. So Dr. Mefo, um, that question that says, uh, you know, one, one, one is on Ankyo, who to discuss with, the other is on what is being done with the elder council i'm not aware you are come with again. the elder council anyway come again please um the uh, caller asked the question what is being done in terms of the people uh being spoken to regarding the elder council you know within the elder council yes so see, i don't know which elder council he means i don't know well we can we can uh, um try to establish what he means. I, I, I think uh, he's talking about um, talking to the elders, right? To have a buy-in. And um, we have elders. For example, in the Southeast, you have uh, Ohaneze as the apex body. And within Ohaneze, you have um, a council called uh, Imobi. Imobi Ohaneze is the elders council of uh, Alibo whether we like it or not. If uh, you go to South-South, Ijo particularly, you, 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 you can't talk about uh, South-South without talking, uh, uh, making reference to, to pa Edwin Clark. You know, and there are elders like him also. Even if they don't form uh, a, a formal group, they, 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 they are there, there is, there, there, you have uh, a group of elders there too. And if you go to Yoruba land, is the same thing. You have Afeniferi. You have Pe, Pe, uh, Adebanjo is there. And um, Apoduku is there. And um, you have even uh, the younger ones that um, uh, also work with them, like uh, Yeko Dumakin. If you go to Middle Belt, you still have, you have, you have elders also. You have a Pogu, you know, Dr. Samson Pogu is there. And they, he has people working with him as well. Now, you see, I am aware that Nyawodo, the President General of Ahaneze, I have had a meeting with him on this. 
Miyamoto is open till tomorrow, as we speak now, to engage is ready and open. Ohanese is ready and open. The, I am not imagining it, Niamudu told me, and I can be quoted, that is open. Let these young men bring their strongest argument to the table. Yet even God said, let us reason together. God is telling man, come, bring your strongest argument. Let us reason eh, together. So the elders are available. I am aware, at least, even if I don't uh, speak for the rest of uh, the zones, I can speak for the Southeast on this issue because I discussed with the President General, I discussed with a number of elders also of uh, Ohaneze leadership, members of uh, Imobi Ohaneze. So Ohaneze is ready to, you know, to, to talk with, you know, the, 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 the um, uh, uh, Biafra agitators and to help them to gain perspective so that they can understand what they are doing better. You see, there is an evil adage that says that Wata, Gwan Nebo Naga, Neagwe Ifo Yeku, Lunwe. This is not a struggle they can win alone. We need to, in fact, if somebody said that the elders should use the younger ones as their working stick. It means that the, the, you know, the, the younger ones will be in front while the elders are backing them up. So the question on talks with elders is there. They are the ones holding it up. I tried to broker a meeting also between uh, uh, Namdekano and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Ohaneze then before the Python class two happened. Look, that meeting can be reactivated. It, it, it is never lost. The anger that IPOB has with you know has against Ohaneze is, is misplaced. It's misplaced aggression. Ohaneze is not the reason they are having a problem. They blame Ohaneze. They said Ohaneze played a role, that the governors play, played a role in bringing about uh, Operation Python Dance. You can blame Ohaneze, but IPOB should also blame itself for sewing uniform and declaring Biafra Security Service. Yes, and calling them the kind of commander in chief. Did they not do that? They played into their hands. So everybody has a blame in this. It's not just, you know, if you were a governor of uh, Abia State and this is happening, what are you going to do? So you need to, you know, at least try to protect your people because the military had already rolled their tanks into, this, into the Southeast in uh, what they called Operation Python Dance. And they were ready for showdown. And we saw how it all ended. So the, the, then the finally, there is also a question of an example of what happened in Imo State, that uh, if uh, Imo State election went the way it went, and uh, somebody that came forth, now came first and uh, became the governor, uh, you know, against the popular wish of the people. Well, in Imo land, election is called Ndorondoro, Ndorondoro Chichi, right? You keep, you keep on the struggle. You win some, you lose some. You keep fighting. You know, politics, I think it was Mao Zedong who said that politics is continuation of war in other forms. They must come and fight it. You win some and you lose some. You don't stay in the diaspora and raising Biafra flag. No, you have to come and raise it on the streets of Enugu. You must come and be part of it at home so that we will match the streets with you. We need to do the matching here in Nigeria. I'm not, they are not out there. Finally, look at what they have to do outside. Those of them that are outside Nigeria need to engage diplomatically. Our problem is not Hausa Fulani. Yes, I need to say this. Our problem is not Hausa Fulani. The Fulanis are are caretakers in Nigeria. They are caretakers for Britain. The problem is Britain. Diplomatic engagement was first Britain. They out there must engage Britain. They must get Britain 
to understand that this union is not working and that Britain has nothing to lose in the dissolution of the Nigerian Union, if it comes to that. If Britain says Nigeria must remain, like they have said this last February, then let Britain help to restore Nigeria federalism. Diplomatic engagement can give us this. And like I said before, if we are able to get Nigeria federalism restored, Biafra agitation will fizzle out. I have, I have every conviction that why we have Biafra agitation is because mainly Igbos are excluded from what is happening in Nigeria. They, they, before, we used to say that the Igbos are playing second fiddle, but today the Igbos are not even playing any fiddle at all. We are now fiddleless, if there is any word like that. So that is what is fueling Biafra agitation. And I believe that if you address the source of the agitation, the agitation will naturally go away. And in the unlikely event that it doesn't go away and Nigeria must be dissolved, let the dissolution not provoke another war. That's my own concern. I am a restructuralist. I believe a restructured Nigeria is a better deal for me and for the Igbo man. I may be wrong, but that is where I stand. Thank you very much. I think we will be wrapping it up in your final con uh, concluding thoughts, uh, my sister Ankyo Briggs. So you have your final concluding thought. Now, bear in mind the question that was asked, you know, regarding who to consult if um, consultation happens, because the caller called back saying that the question wasn't answered before. Well, I think he actually directed it to 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 Mefo, but it is okay because I answered I answered it by saying that we have structures, we have we are ethnic nationality. When you want to discuss this grievous matter that the politicians will not listen to, that the people who have picked up this fault. 1999 constitution and have taken an oath on it cannot even if they want to they cannot do anything about calling for um, um self-determination to the extent that some of us have done it you can have self-determination within nigeria and actually be completely autonomous in nigeria as an ethnic nationality or as a state. What we have today are 36 states. Within these 36 states, you have a job people. You have a job people in six states of the Niger Delta region. This Niger Delta is also known politically as the South South region. Now, when I finish this, I'm inviting everybody listening because maybe some of them are also culprits, I don't know. But just go to my page or my Facebook wall, and I have blocked most of them now. But once I go on air, if you come to my wall, 2,000, 3,000 from Kuala Lumpur, from everywhere, you know, and Kyo Bricks is this, and Kyo Bricks is that. You're not going to get me to support what you are doing. If you think I'm so important, one person, that you have to rain down insults on me for 2,000 from 2,000 people, you won't get my support. Now, having said that, look, the Ijo people are ethnic nationality. We are a people and we have structures. We have our own structure, just like Ndibu have. So if you want to engage Ijo people on political issue or on issue of common interest, of security, which we do have, we are neighbors, we are tied by marriage to each other, that Igbo people are married to Hausa people and Yoruba people does not mean that automatically their children must become uh, Yoruba people. No, they are Igbo children. So because we are married to you, to Igbo people, should be a thing of joy, should be a thing that will connect us. Not for you, some, for, for some people to say, oh, because we were married before, you must be Igbo people. We have structures. If you want to speak to a Calabari, Calabari kingdom, 
which includes Abonima, Buguma, Bakana, Tombia. We have kings and we have council of chiefs. We have war canoe houses. You have to approach those people. Forget what is happening today where youths no longer respect elders. Start them with the war and after the war. But those structures are still there. If you want Aboni, my people, my people, to understand and support what you are calling Biafra, you have to come to Aboni, Ma. You have to seek an appointment. When I say this thing, they say, no, who? Who shall did uh, uh, Lord Lugard seek our appointment to, uh, to make us uh, 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 whatever he made us? Well, then be there and be talking. Because I know, and I know, and I'm telling you, that even if one person that you know and you think is a, a militant or ex-militant or whatever have said that they are Biafra, it does not mean that the Amayanabo of Calabari under whom there are other, other uh, communities and other <laughs> kingdoms and clans that they also have keyed into it. We have work in new houses. I'm from the Bricks work in new house. I'm not from Jack. So if I key into something, it doesn't mean that Jack has keyed into it. If you want to reach everybody, you go to the Council of Chiefs. You're not a politician. I, IPOB uh, is not a political party. It is not looking for political votes. It is looking for support for a movement. When you're looking for that movement, you go to the people. No. When I talk, they say, uh, this engineer, and then they will post uh, on somebody's Facebook, one engineer said he's supporting Biafra. Okay, you should come to my house now, come and support Biafra in my family house in Briggs Compound, let us see. It's not like that. You will go to the people. There's no matter what it is, we still have them. The real chiefs, not the ones that are buying a, a chief Tessy title. The ones that originally came with this thing, people of the royal family. You go to them to talk to their people, to key into what you are driving. And they will tell you how they can key in and how they can. I have told you and I have made it very clear that there is no, even if 100 people in my community will key into the word Biafra. I'm telling you that my whole community will not key into the word Biafra. During the war, so, my okay. uncle, one uncle was killed by federal government. They said he's a saboteur, that he gave information to Biafra. When Biafra came, they killed another uncle and said that that one gave information to federal government. It, with that type of uh, 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 circumstances, where do I belong? During the war, I ended up in Mary Odili's family home, named by say, as a refugee with my family. And that's because there was a connection during uh, 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 their, their, uh, their sojourn, our father's uh, movement in Europe and all those things to come and study here. They knew themselves as well during uh, the 60s. So we saw refuge in that place, in places like Owerenta. So what I'm trying to say is that too much is connecting us. But you cannot force it down people's throats. You cannot be insulting people. The uh, chief uh, uh, Naiwodo is being insulted by his own people. And then you're saying that you will force him to toe your line. And he's older than you. What is it that you know, sir? What is it that other people don't know? We're telling you that it is not possible even me, I cannot get it, your Republic today. I can't get it. Who's going to give it to me? But I'm asking for it. There is a saying that if you want, uh, who was saying, if you want a uh, uh, part of the elephant, you start you uh, dragging, the man, it was you that said it, you yes. start dragging the whole elephant. It's if you want uh, 50, you start saying it's 100, or I won't agree. When they yes. see that maybe you see, <laughs> you're, you're serious, so, and there is a two of they you, three of you. Start you start okay, for why, the why don't you take uh, <laughs> forty or so? You start talking. You I start from the top. I think. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, in conclusion, uh, here, um, you know, I think we've all said it all. We've been on this conversation for about the uh, getting to two and a half hours. Now, the thing here is, is a conversation we would not uh, finish in one day. It is a continuum, and at the same time.
it is a conversation that, you know, the, the beauty of conversation is that you talk, someone listens, assimilates what you've said, then you also assimilate what the opponents have said. So over time, we will get to know, as you rightly pointed out, now, to so many of us, uh, Biafra is not a, a, a is not a means to a finality. <clears throat> you know, in, like I, like I keep saying, um, when you negotiate and you're dragging, as Lo, as Dr. Lomé first said in Igbo, it's called Ndorondoro, and I'm Ndorondoro with you. I'm I'm dragging with you, and I'm demanding the whole elephant because if I had, if I come from the first instance and say. And that is, you know, this my concluding thought is for both parties, both for those who want to restructure him and those who want to be Afro. We must accommodate each other. And that's both, the point. Yeah. Both want the same thing. And what is that thing? Better life, better opportunities, better security of life. And not, and not you, only that, Maz, not only you, that, it's, for, it, for you. Your, your your wife, your children, you know, for generations born. At the end of the day, what it's going to mean is that if, let us, for one second, now imagine that someone will say, oh, if you're talking about Biafra, you must be, you must be stupid. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it makes the person who talks about Biafra to be emotionally charged against you because it's going to think, hey, why are you not listening to me? So you think the Afro I'm talking is nonsense. And at the same time, now flip the coin. If someone is saying, let us go back to 1963. Let us go back to Aburi Accord. It is also restructuring. You know, sometimes some of us say on Aburi we stand. We talk Aburi we stand, it's restructuring because we want to go back to the agreements they reached out in Ghana. That agreement is what they want, you know, some of us want to go back to. The other time I had a conversation with uh, Paade Banjo and even the one we had. Okay, I think you can mute your, you, I know you have a, a lot of birds at home. So you can, I think your background. So, and when you have a conversation with someone like Paade Banjo and he tells you that, yes, they want to go back to 1963 and 1963 is nothing but the Republican constitution. Now, Yes, there are. My good brother, John Pedro Obaseke, I, if I speak with him, he would disagree with me because he doesn't want 1963. He argues that 1963 does not give him what he wants for the Bendel, you know, for the Midwest region. But again, it means that we must and we must talk to each other. And in, in final conclusion here, yeah, to some of us who also want the state of Biafra, please, we cannot get the state of Biafra by talking down on anyone who does not agree with the concept or who does not agree on the methodology or who says, oh, there could be another way. And in conclusion, yeah, let us look at Catalonian. Let us even look at, uh, you know, people that have their own government, they have their own place, yet what they thought an illegal referendum was done and the guy was pursued. And some of us couldn't believe that in Europe, someone could actually, you know, be handled in that way. The Scotland, the Scottish woke up and said they want to get out of the United Kingdom. And they went to vote. Sadly, they didn't win. Again, it means that when the people decide that they want Biafra and they need to, remember the people that negotiated for, for Scotland, to get a date for referendum were politicians. They are politicians. That's all we are saying here. We must get engaged because we cannot say that politics doesn't matter because it controls our life. I've said on this platform several times, the reason why we have what we have is because we have cucumbers and carrots running the affairs. There is no local government that I know of in Nigeria that has a functional toilet that a lady can walk in and sit down and, and we, it does not happen. Not one, not one. In all the federation, in the whole Biafran region, the Ibo nation, the Arewa, the Oduduwa, not one. So it is something that would begin at some point to talk to one another in a civil manner, 
in order to drive that conversation. Again, it is a debate that is ongoing and that debate must be sustained. I know some people you know, might not like it, but it is debate. That's what it is all about. We see them in the English parliament, they debate, the prime minister says something, the opposition says something, the other person says something. They might not agree with one another, but they will have to go home to come back tomorrow. The debate must continue. On that note, I say thank you everyone for joining us. Okay, um, I'll give you the final thoughts on that, then we'll call it a day. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, Maziz. Okay, I think we have said it all. I want to thank uh, Brits and uh, Dr. Mefo, but I want to start from where uh, end of this where we started. This right off from Dr. Mefo, I want to quote again how he started it. He said, The masses, the forgetfulness of the masses are very great. They must be told one thing a thousand times. And he quoted Adolf Hitler. And uh, on that note, I want to remind our people that this struggle is for us. It's not we against them. Whether you are a, Biafra, a Biafraist or the IPOB or whatever, the issue that our people should stop being lied to. Nobody should be lying to us because we want to give us Biafra. Our people... We must stop insulting our leaders. Excuse me for the beds. I don't know why they are so much active this evening. I'm sorry about that. So we must stop lying to our people. We must stop dividing our people. We must stop insulting our leaders. Even in animal kingdoms, they have leaders. We have people to consult. We have people to give all our intelligence. And I assure you, they do it very, very well. We must engage in the politics. I want a little bit to differentiate what Dr. Mefo said. Those of us who happen to find ourselves in diaspora, we have a lot to do, but we must do that together. With the other people who are talking of the same thing, we can influence our government. Those who are staying in London, they can influence their government. We can bring to notice what is happening, whether it is in the church level and the, in the, in the, all the bishops' conferences or whatever. We have a lot to offer our people. But please, for goodness sake, let us stop being lied to. Let us face the reality and let nobody be ready to die for nothing. We have an existing entity recognized worldwide. We want Biafra because we lack a lot of infrastructure. Our airports, our seaports, and everything is skewed against us. But all the same, we must live with faith, with intelligence, and respect for the Igbo tradition we have rich custom that most of us have thrown aboard, and that doesn't help us. I wish all of you a happy evening. Thank you, Mazio okay. Zioke, and thank you, thank you very and much. Dr. Mafo. that note, sorry, uh, Ankyo, you want have something to say? Uh, yeah, I was just waving bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, okay, uh, okay, hold on. Okay, that's fine. You, 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 you stay on. I, I can only say that, please, oh, by after listening to this, it will not be... No, don't go back and start insulting Mazi and uh, Oge and myself. It will just run off. <laughs> Me, I will block you. <laughs> no, um, I think I think we, we will get somewhere. In you know, my concluding uh, statement will be as um, written by uh, uh, Mazi and Doctor uh, Mefo. He said that both restructuring and Nigeria. Thank you. Uh, you know, he said. Thank you for this uh, wonderful. Hold on, Mefo. Uh, both restructuring and Nigerian president of Igbo extraction are rights of Ndibo and not in any way mutually exclusive or contradicting anything. So it means that while we hope for the best, or rather, we must work and still work and work to get what we want while we hope for the best. We, you know, we have been giving uh, lemons, let's make lemonade out of it. We can still do all the same and get them right. We are a great people. We are a people that when it mattered most, our airports were bombed during the day and at night. Our great, our great fathers will rebuild them for airplanes land the next day. It is a feat that's never been done in any part of the world, that a people who with nothing 
only the secondary school biology most of them had were able to refine petroleum products that a federal government of Nigeria 50, 50 you know, basically 60 years after independence cannot re refine, that they go ahead and keep importing something that they could easily do. You, we collectively are a great people, and the great people we are indeed. On that note, I will say thank you, everyone, once more for tuning in. I remain Mazezoke here signing off. Thank you. So.